This game has been going viral in the chess world and for good reason. As you can see, white has a very big advantage. Black has no pieces left, but black was not resigning. Now, this was a game played by Grandmaster Amon Hamilton. He's from the Chess Brought YouTube channel. Well, before I show you what happened here, let me just ask you a question. If you're playing this position as white and your opponent is not resigning, what are you going to do? Well, what a lot of people would probably do is get a queen and then checkmate the king. That would make sense. Or some people would try to get six queens and somehow avoid stalemating the king and then checkmate the king. Other people might promote two knights and then deliver checkmate with seven knights or something simil similar. But Amon has a different idea. He has a very different idea. He gets two bishops. And then he proceeds to put the bishops on their starting square. And then he gets a queen, and guess what? He puts it on the starting square. And you might be starting to see where this is going if you haven't already seen this game. And then, of course, he gets the rooks, and he gets the last knight, and he puts it on the starting square. Now, this is actually brilliant. And the reason this is brilliant is because when you go to a chess tournament over the board, and when you are finished playing, you have to set up the board at the end, right? There's pieces all over the place and you have to put them back on their starting square. So what Amon is doing here is he's just setting it up before the game ends, which is kind of brilliant. I think I'm going to use this next time I go to a tournament because once I finish the game, I'll just get up and walk away. Everybody else will be setting up the board and be like, see you later. I'm done. My pieces are good to go, right? So I, it's, it's so brilliant, right? The problem is it's not checkmate and Black's King is over there wandering around the board. So Amon does what any normal, uh, you know, intermediate chess player would do starts moving his queen and rook to do a ladder mate because that makes a lot of sense here we go here we go ladder mate perfect wait a second he forgot how the ladder mate works he's trying again wait a second that's not how it works what is happening what is happening and there you go that is the checkmate that has been called the reset checkmate and if you're wondering it's really very simple. Here's your cheat sheet for you. You go here and you go here, here and here and here and here, and then here, 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 and here and here and here and here, I think, if I'm not mistaken, and here and here and here and here and here and here. So if you want to screenshot that, that's your cheat sheet. All you have to do is follow those 20 moves and you will get a checkmate. I don't know how he figured that out. I don't know how much time, free time he has to be able to do that, but it is what it is, and so what I'm gonna do in this video is show you guys how to do it step by step, because I know everybody wants to go and, and try this. Now, you're gonna need a couple of things. Obviously, you're gonna need at least seven pawns, or a couple of pieces, and then a few other pawns to obviously replace the pieces with, okay? And I thought, what better way, what better way to practice this than against good old Martin? If you don't know, Martin is the 250 rated beginner chess bot on chess.com. I've done a lot of videos over the years playing against Martin, but never the reset checkmate. So what I'm going to do right now is actually play a five minute game against Martin. We're going to add the time just so it's a little bit more interesting. And I'm going to try to accomplish the reset checkmate uh, in five minutes. Now, I've never done this before. I did memorize the moves, which we'll talk about more when we get there. But other than that, I don't actually know how this is going to turn out. So. I hope that Martin actually takes my pieces because I could totally see Martin doing something like that. Anyway, let's just go ahead. Let's go ahead, get the center here. I'm going to pre-move. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. It's okay. I want to save my time because I think I might need it. And if we do lose some pieces, that's okay. Let's go ahead. We're going to take all of his pieces. That's step number one. Let me go here. I don't know why I walked into a fork, but it's Martin, so I'm not super concerned. I'm just going to just basically trade and take pieces and not really think too much. Yeah, let's just... Keep trading. End games are good because I want to be able to promote all my pawns easily. So let's just trade some stuff off. And I don't want to have too many pieces because I won't be able to do the reset mate. And I am afraid that Martin might not, not actually take all my pieces. So we're going to make sure we give away some of these pieces along the way here. Okay, let's go C3 and castle. Let's bring a rook over here. I don't know why. Let's go take. Oh, we'll just take the rook, I guess. Let me okay, he's going to do that. Let's see. Let's go here and try to trade some more pieces. Thank you, Martin. So step one is going pretty good so far. I think I'm going to go ahead and just sacrifice this. Like I said, I'm worried that he won't. Take, okay, he's actually doing a good job of taking pieces. So I, I'm, I'm impressed with Martin's play right now, which is good. This is what I wanted. This is exactly what I wanted to happen. Let's put the knight in the center. And I think I'll bring the rook up and over and start taking these pawns. Mm-hmm. 
Let's go take this guy. Okay, very good. Let's go, let's see, do I want to take, yeah, let's actually take that. So we can either keep the seven pawns, okay, now we have six pawns, which is fine. Let me take this one first, because we do have two pieces, so we're, we're still good. I do want to be careful, let me go ahead and actually get rid of this rook, I think that's important. Let's get rid of the rook. And okay, perfect. So we have the seven, or the six pawns plus the knight. All we have to do is not lose any pawns, which should be doable. Got to be careful. Martin's trying to get tricky. He's trying not to get reset mate, but it's not going to happen, Martin. Not today, my friend. Here comes the cavalry. Let's take this guy. And okay, let's go here. I think I'm gonna go ahead and, and maybe get like a rook or something. Okay, let's make sure we take that. Don't let him take it. All right, here we go. Now we just need to get uh, the pieces. So we're gonna march this guy down the board. Very good. And why not? We'll go ahead and get the queen first. Let's put the queen back where it needs to go. And let me make sure I don't stalemate. That would be bad. Let's go ahead, move the queen here. Okay, now these can safely be moved. Let's get a rook. Okay, let's put the rook back here. Let's go ahead and maybe I'll get a bishop next. Bishop, put that back. Okay, I need another bishop. Let me get the other bishop here. Actually, I'll just leave my king. I don't need to use my king for that. Let me go ahead and put my knight over here. Just getting everything in order. Uh, let me force his king out of here. I need the king to move away without getting checkmate. Be careful here. All right, here we go, here we go. So we're gonna get the rook, we're gonna get the bishop. Let me go ahead and get the, uh, the bishop so I don't mess up the color square here. That's important little detail. So notice, I need the dark square bishop. So I wanna make sure that I promote this pawn on the dark square, if, if I try to promote these to a bishop, obviously it's gonna be the wrong color bishop. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. Let's go ahead and get the dark squared bishop out of the way. There we go. Bishop, very good. We'll put that guy back here. And now, let's block off the king, very good. Now we can push this without worrying about Martin taking it. We need a rook and we need a knight. So we're gonna go do that. Let's make sure it's not gonna be stalemate. I think we are good. Let's get the rook, put it back here. And here we go. Let's get the other knight. Very good. Uh, how do we get the knight there? Like this should do it. So let's do that. Let's put the queen back. Okay, finally we've achieved this position now. What we need to do is the sequence of moves. It starts with the queen coming over to g2. So this is the first step in the process. So we go one, two. Okay, bring the queen up and over, e2, g2. And, but what we're trying to do is force the king in a very systematic way to kind of march up the board and eventually come here. That's what, that's why we're doing this. And if you do it the way that Amon figured out, it just works every time, unless the king's like over here and gets stalemated, I believe is the only thing. So queen comes up and over. Then we're gonna do rook up and over, okay? So we go here, here. Then we're gonna go one, two, three, like if, as if we're doing a ladder mate. One, two, three. And you can pre-move all this if you're playing in like a real game. And instead of going any further, we stop. We go just one with the rook. And then we go with the queen. And then we sneak the queen to f8, okay? And again, we've kind of pushed the king to the back. Now we're gonna push it off of the back and start marching it kind of down this way, but you have to do it in a very systematic way. So the queen comes in, comes in, uh, was it here I think? Queen comes in like this. Now you're gonna bring the rook over and down, sorry. You're gonna bring the rook over and down to d8. And I'll show you an easy way to practice this at the end here, okay? And then you're gonna bring the queen, is it, wait, is it the queen to e7? I think it's the queen to e7, then the rook here. Okay, then the queen's gonna go to c7 and notice we're forcing that king up this way. Okay, going to c7. And now the finishing touch, rook d2, h2, h1. So we're just gonna go boom, boom, boom. You can pre-move those. And it turns out that at the, at the end here, we're gonna go queen d6. And it, look carefully at the king. Okay, look carefully at the king. The bishop's controlling here, the rook's controlling here. 
The knight is controlling this. The bishop's controlling this. So the king only has these two options. We want him to go to c2, so we take away this one. And we open up that one, actually. So the, the queen was controlling it. So we force him there. There's the checkmate. Okay? So let me just show you going back. It takes 20 moves once you have the pieces set up. Let me go back to the beginning here. So um, this was the starting position. Okay? What I recommend you do is set up this position. Put the king wherever you want, except like over here somewhere where it gets stalemated. Uh, put the king somewhere. Set this position up. Practice it against a computer. And then just make these moves over and over again until you understand. All right? That's all, that's all it is. So queen e2, queen g2. Rook comes up and over to f3. Then you do the ladder mate. But you don't go all the way. You stop. Rook f6. Queen here. Queen here. Then slide the rook over and down. The queen comes up. Rook d6. Check. Bring the rook back over. Just copy the moves, right? That's it. There you go. Thank you to Amon Hamilton for discovering this. I, I think if people actually do this and play it in, in real games, chess.com membership is going to plummet because so many people are going to just quit chess. My advice, maybe just play it against bots because you're not going to hurt anybody's feelings. You're not going to make anyone quit chess. But that decision obviously is up to you guys. Um, hope you enjoyed this. Shout out to Amon Hamilton for, for coming up with this. Stay sharp. Play smart. Take care.